All right, so we're looking at the uh, fruit fly uh, FRQ. And in this experiment, the setup was that we had a choice chamber, just like the one we had with the pill bugs at the beginning of the year. And there was an insertion point where they put uh, 60 flies into the choice chamber. At one end, there's a cotton ball soaked in 10% glucose solution, and there's a dry cotton ball with no uh, glucose at all. And so this is to test uh, whether or not the fruit flies are going to uh, prefer a uh, the section of the um, choice chamber with glucose. Are they going to be attracted to glucose? And so the question asks, um, predict the distribution of flies in the chamber after 10 minutes and justify your prediction. So we're going to predict and then we're going to justify. Our prediction should be that the flies are going to be attracted or going to, there will be more flies in the, the side of the tr uh, chamber, or the trace chamber, with uh, glucose. Why is that? Our justification is going to be that there is uh, an energy source, there is sugar on the side, and so therefore the uh, flies will be attracted to that. Um, now we're going to propose one specific improvement to each of the following parts of the experimental design. So we're going to propose and we're going to explain how the modification will affect the experiment. So for the control, um, we can see that uh, the control here is, uh, it has glucose, but it's also soaked in solution, which means it has water. So this is wet. This does not have uh, glucose, but it also is dry. So there's also a variation in how wet it is. So if we wanted to improve the experimental control, we could soak this in water and we could put this, um, keep this the same and have glucose. So then the only difference in the control would be that there is sugar um, and no variation in, in wetness. Um, also, we could make the point to say that all other variables are held constant. So it's going to be the same temperature, it's going to be the same light, et cetera, et cetera. For our environmental factors, how would we improve environmental factors? To improve the environmental factors, we could uh, use different concentrations of glucose. We could make this one 20%, we could make this one 10. We could use different temperatures. We could make one cold, one warm. Um, we could vary the uh, length of the experiment or the time of day. And what that would show us is, uh, even though we changed these other, we, we did these tests um, with these same, with these in different environmental conditions, if in all of these conditions the flies still uh, moved to the one side, then it would show that um, the flies are attracted to the glucose. It would be more evidence. Part C, the experiment described above is repeated with ripe bananas at one end. So if we have uh, ripe bananas, oop, let me get my pen. If we have ripe bananas on this side, ripe, and we have a middle section here, and we have unripe on the other side. Um, once again, the positions of the flies are observed and recorded every 10 minutes. The positions of the flies after one minute and 10 minutes are shown below. So here are the times, or here are the numbers of flies in the positions at one minute and then at 10 minutes. And so if we were to perform a chi-square um, for the data on 10 minutes here, this is, um, this, we're going to do this because this is what we're asking, but in reality, if we were to perform a chi-square, we would want at least 30 data points to um, back up our statistical significance. But this is what they're asking us for, so this is what we are going to do. So perform a chi-square test on the data for 10 minutes um, and write a null hypothesis. So we know that our null hypothesis is going to state that the flies are going to be distributed evenly. We suspect that there will be uh, 20 flies here. If there's 60 flies total, there'll be 20 flies here, 20 flies here, and 20 flies here. And this will show us that there is, if, if this is uh, what we see, then this will tell us that the uh, ripeness of the banana has 
no effect on the flies. And so that is our null hypothesis. We suspect that uh, there will be 20 flies on the ripe side, 20 flies on the unripe side, and 20 flies in the middle to demonstrate that there is no statistical significance. Um, and so explain whether or not your hypothesis is supported by the chi-square test and justify your explanation. So first, let's go through and make sure that you are showing all of your math when you do this. Um, the end with the, the ripe banana. So what are our observed data and what is our expected data? So we just said that we expect that each of these are going to be 20. There's going to be 20 flies um, and our observed data. So the end with the ripe banana, we suspect uh, there was actually, so we observed that there was 45. In the middle, we observed that there was 3. And with the unripe banana, we observed that there was 12. And that's a total of 60. It's a total of 60. So now we need to do our chi-square. And in order to do that, we have to subtract the expected amount from the observed amount, square that value, and divide it by the expected. So here, um, if we have, let's see, 45 minus 20 gives us 25. And if we square that, that gives us uh, 625 divided by our 20. And that will give us 31.25. So 31.25. And here, if we do 3 minus 20, that gives us negative 17. If we square that, that gives us 289. 289 divided by 20 gives us 14.45. Um, to save time, I'm going to do the exact same for this last uh, data set, 12 minus 20. This gives us 3.2. And if we add this all together, it's going to give us 48.9. And so what does that mean? That means that uh, we are going to look at our... Uh, chart here and we are going to be using remember that we use 0 0.05 here and we had three options remember we had uh, the middle the right the unripe minus one so that gives us three and if we take one away we use that gives us two degrees of freedom so this means that if we have an um uh, oh we're just jumping around a little bit um, that means if our total is um, greater than this 5.99, then we're going to reject our hypothesis, which means that there is statistical significance, is significant, meaning that the, the ripe bananas, the ripeness of the bananas do have an effect on where the flies are. And if the number is less than 5.99, well then we're going to accept our null hypothesis. And that's going to mean that um, there is no statistical significance. And so if we look at our number 48.9, that is greater than 5.99. And so therefore, uh, we are going to uh, say that it is, uh, we're going to reject our null hypothesis our justification is that um, I would go into an explanation about how our um, our total is greater than 5.99 and so therefore we reject our um, our null hypothesis so that would be my justification so briefly propose a model that describes how environmental cues affect the behavior of fruit flies um, in choice there's a couple that we could use um, one would be the, let's say, uh, stimulus 
our, if we look back to our uh, characteristics of life, if you have a stimulus, it causes um, a response in living things. So our stimulus is sugar, and the response is for the flies to move towards the sugar. Another one, let me move down here where there's some room. Um, if you remember back when we were talking about neurons, there was this diagram here where we had sensory neurons. So sensory, that means that the information is coming into your system. It's integrated through um, interneurons. And then it causes an effect or a response, an output in our motor neurons or motor output. So we could do sensory input. So the, the flies sense the glucose. It integrates um, in their interneurons, which causes the, their wings to, to, to beat and to drive them over to the, um, to the glucose. And that is um, pretty much all that we need to talk about with this one. So I hope this helps, and I will talk to you guys later.